Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, a couple of things I want to touch with you uh, real quick on. And uh, before I get into this issue, I'm going to be discussing. Um, we're going to be going back to the video I just did, prayer that that is meant to take you into Christ's presence. Uh, I'm going to be talking about that because I got this link here: Portal to the Palladians. Uh, very, very evil, very evil, uh, without a doubt. I, I need to share some things with you there. Going to talk about that with you in just a moment here. But before I do, uh, let me real quick let you know though, Russia and um, Syrian warplanes targeted a NATO backed terrorist headquarters in the vicinity of Idlib. Uh, this just happening just hours ago uh, in Syria, there near Idlib. Uh, as you can see on your screen, there, you're going to see the sky light up here in just a moment there. Uh, definitely doing some targeting going on there. Uh, the situation escalating in Syria once again. White helmets were trying to get into the location there. Of course, we know that the white helmets, in my opinion, they are a terrorist organization. Uh, a lot of people don't like to hear that. They don't want you to say that, especially in our country here. But the truth is, it's just let's let's call it what it is, right? Let's get right right with it. I, I am preparing a special broadcast and I'm just going to kind of let that hover right there. Uh, Chabad and that drug dealing trafficking uh, that goes on in Latin America. been working on this now for a few days. There's a reason why uh, the this organization is really focused on Latin America. Same thing with Israel. Uh, part of the Sephardic movement bringing them back in but also exploitation resources, drug cartels, all types of things going to be getting into here. Uh, hopefully tomorrow, Bolivian policemen close local Chabad house. That was on the Jerusalem Post there. There's been other articles, Israeli Chabad emissary nabbed in Madrid with four kilograms of cocaine. These are all older articles here, but you need to know just how corrupt it is. Just like I exposed here in the United States, a uh, major drug uh, cartel ring going on. Uh, CIA involved in these uh, operations that were happening. I've done a lot of that through the whistleblowing that I did a little while back. Uh, most of that done in private meetings. I never actually really got too deep into that here on Israeli News Live because it is one of those subjects they don't want you talking about. Uh, anyway, this though is very serious and I'm going to play this little trailer here for you because it is what I call the anti-type of what the message was that I gave you. And it's amazing. Elizabeth sent this to me, a good friend of ours there that helps us here on Israeli News Live. And she had sent this. And yet just the day before she sends it, I do this video here, prayer that is meant to take you into Christ's presence, into the presence of Jesus Christ, that is. Uh, you know, I really, and I don't even know if I really got that message across as deeply as I was trying to get it to, to be understood. Um, but it is truly through a through prayer that not only just prayer, but it's when you have your mind full of Christ, when when you are just constantly your thoughts are upon him. You know, the scripture says over in Matthew uh, 6, verse 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And what he's talking about is in other words, what is on your mind, what is in your thoughts and things of that nature there, this is where your heart will go. If our thoughts and things are on the cares of the world and the things of this life, and, and naturally that happens, we can't help it every day, you're bombarded by uh, situations that are happening in this earth here. But the more we can put our true treasure on those heavenly things, thinking of, uh, of our Lord and the, and the words that he said and searching him out. You know, the scripture says, he that knocketh, it shall be open. He that, uh, um, oh, and, I, and I'm kind of blank on that for a moment there, but, but that knocketh is a continual knocking. He did, you just don't give up. You're just right there. You got to know more about the Lord. Well, when you are in that type of thinking, that's where your heart will be also. In other words, it literally, through prayer, it can take you in. Uh, in fact, this is exactly what causes even visions with the prophets. Uh, I, I've gone through visions in my life. I understand what they're like, how they work and stuff. And I can tell you from experience 
the more your mind is in tune with the Lord and the more you hunger and thirst after righteousness, the more you are filled. And it's not just being filled with knowledge and revelation, but it literally takes you into that spiritual realm. Uh, it takes you into the place where you see uh, the visions. You can literally go into a realm where revelation becomes a reality. It becomes a living reality because you are now in the very presence of God. You are caught up not just with sensations, not just with uh, a lot of people get into the sensations and they think this is what uh, what I'm talking about. No, it's not. It is literally coming into that presence of Almighty God where you are you have an audience with him. Now I want to play though this this trailer for you that they have here real quick because it reminds me, I was, uh, I was in a discussion one time uh, with some folks there from D.C. and a very well-respected journalist who really literally thought that the Palladians were uh, the good guys of aliens. Uh, I call them archons, fallen angels, but thought they were the good guys there and that they have our interests at heart. And although it is true that they are ahead of the Galactic Federation, it is true that they are against the reptilians, nonetheless, uh, you know, everything I've heard about them, they do not have our true interests at heart. And, and let's face it, if it's just an archon, how could they have your true interest at heart? But listen into this right here. We're gonna we're gonna click on here, we're gonna watch this trailer here for you. I think it's very important for you to see this. Um, and let me just see where I can play this at. Here we go, watch the trailer. The shift in consciousness from 3D to 4D to 5D is going on on the planet right now. And each and every one of us have a role to play. I was meditating and the Palladians started communicating with me. And I was like, oh my God, are aliens even real? And she was starting to notice almost nightly connections to these beings and she's saying I feel like they're wanting to connect with me I wonder what this means as the platings kept coming to me I was invited to go up to this starship in 5d consciousness and when I got up there there was this medbed technology for humanity to help themselves from the inside out is actually really the divine wisdom behind this Pleiadian medbed process through accessing this Galactic Federation starship, we've not only learnt about the Palladians and how they look very human, we've learnt about all the other Galactic Star Brothers and Sisters from all over this universe. Many of the members of the Galactic Federation inputting DNA into creating us into what we are and they want to see us fulfil our destiny, fulfil what we are capable of. And now more than ever, the Galactic Federation is invested in ensuring that humanity does not send itself into another reset. That at this time we embrace the opportunity to move into a new level of consciousness. Now I'm going to kind of pause it right there. One thing that I need you to understand when they're talking about this, this is why we're going to have a new world order. This is the reason why you see uh, people like Ariel Tzedek, uh, the uh, Jewish rabbi that claims that the reptilians are, are our friends, uh, that they're not your enemy. Uh, these, he talks about them being biblical uh, angels, things of that nature there. Well, I hate to break it to you, they're not the good guys. Uh, uh, you know, they, are they real? Yes, they are real. Uh, do we, are we, are we, in a situation where this is about to uh, come upon us like an ocean wave, no doubt. But, you know, I want to share with you something from the book of Revelation, too, that, that, that really kind of caught my attention when I thought about exactly this particular scenario that they're saying. As if you recall, at the beginning of that trailer, the woman talks about in her meditation, she began to contact these Palladians. They began to contact her. She ends up going in through a fifth dimension and goes uh, uh, into a starship that they have. Is that possible? Well, I believe it is possible, but you got to remember you're going into a realm that is so ungodly it's not even funny. You are not coming in the presence of Christ. Remember, as the scripture says, where your 
uh, heart is or where your treasures are, that's where your heart is. So as people begin to think along those lines there, that's where they're going to go. Yes, they will go. They will actually get audiences like that. Uh, but it's not going to be a good thing. And as we have here in the scriptures in Revelation 17, it reminds me here, and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as, uh, as of yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. Uh, maybe this has more of a context that we're not thinking about, but look what it says here next. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. All right, they have one mind, and that's just to give their power completely over to the beast. Reptilians, are, for example, are beasts. Palladians, they may look human, but they're not good guys either. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Of course, in this video here, they're talking about all their galactic brothers and things like that, right? Now, now more know? than and, ever. Uh, you know, so let's see where it goes into that. Let's see if we can get that part there. Forget where it was at. But anyway, here we go right there, right? They, they bring it up there and they're going to show you all their galactic brothers. And it's kind of interesting. They show the lion head. They show this one here. They show this looking weird creature, right? They want to make things look beautiful. But what is this really all about? If you recall, those of you that watch our Patreon channel, I brought out some of this information, how that uh, one particular entity from the oceans, no doubt, came up and talked about Ra, the sun god, that is coming back. And they were talking about in 2026. Now, whether or not it's going to really happen at that time frame or not, I don't know. But how that they said that they were coming at a time when humanity will be at a despair, where we will be at world war, and where we will be close to annihilating ourselves, and where uh, famine, disease, and everything else would be striking the earth, and that they would come with the remedy to cure all these problems. And of course, Israel already believes that these guys are the savior of the world, and so they're accepting it. As Rabbi Ariel Sidok said on the History Channel, you know, our help will come from inner earth. Think about some of this stuff, right? You know, speaking of coming from inner earth, I ran across a place over in the Dead Sea Scrolls just recently when they're talking about the sacrifices, and it literally used the term that they made this, this, uh, this labor that goes down into the center of the earth for the blood to go into that area there. Then I began to wonder what kind of sacrificing were they really getting into uh, during that time there. No wonder when Jesus came, he really began to condemn the things that were happening there. But let me just kind of share something else too as we go on. The, these shall make war with the Lamb. We saw that, right? We read that there. Shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords, King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he says unto, the, unto me, the waters which you saw, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. You know, I got to think into a little bit, and it may, in, I only say this as, in, as an inclusion, not to say that it doesn't represent the nations and tongues on the earth and things of that nature there, but it says, see, and he said unto me, the waters which you saw where the horse sits are peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. And more and more we keep hearing about that aliens are coming up out of the oceans, out of the waters. We know Leviathan comes up from there. So I don't know. These are just, I'm only sharing this as thoughts. I don't know the answer to these questions as of yet, but I certainly know one thing. I do want, as the scripture says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I want to have my treasure, my treasure, my treasure to be Jesus Christ. Remember the scripture that says also, let the mind that is in Christ be in you. That's the type of mind I want. I want his mind, his thoughts, his ways. I want to be so full of his thinking and his and, and everything about him that when I pray, it literally draws me into his presence that he'll reveal himself to me, that I'm able to come and share back with you those things that, that perhaps he would make known to us. 
you know, and you the same. You do the same where there's no respect of persons. You know, God doesn't have big eyes and little U's. So by all means, let's let's really put our minds to the word of God here. Also look here, which which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to a stature? And why take you thought of for raiment or, or you know clothes or consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I send you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God clothed the grass in the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Or, or, or O ye of little faith, therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or where, wherewithal shall we be clothed? You know why he's saying these things to you in this chapter here? He doesn't want us to be so caught up with the carnal things of the world. He's wanting us to have our minds on him. That's why it says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Right? He already knows you need it. You don't need to ask. But he says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Put, make him your treasure. You know, imagine that you know Christ is that is that great treasure to where you can just go all through the different rooms of the house and just search out to know Father. Not even a make it more than a house. Make it universe. Make it beyond even the universe. Make it all the way through the other worlds and everything else to where God would show you anything and everything, whatever your heart's desire is. And to really, truly, let's get in one with him. So that the mind that was in Christ be also in us. And ima ima could you imagine that? That the mind that was in Christ be in you? Could you imagine you having his mind, his understanding, his knowledge, his wisdom? And yet the scripture says that if the books were written of the things that he did, the world could not contain it itself. I want that mind. I want to know all the things that he knew. He said that the works that I do greater than this you, that you'll do because I go unto the Father. So just think about these things. Ay, 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 friends. What an amazing Father that we serve in everything. Let's get ready. Let's don't be, listen, there is all types of distractions out there right now. Don't accept, don't accept the fake for when we have the genuine we can have the genuine of the earnest of, of the Spirit. You know, I was sitting there, and I don't know if I shared this with you or not, but I went to go see a friend of mine. Just talked about him recently, Joey, uh, here on, on one of my broadcasts recently. I went to visit with this family here, and, and his son, uh, Dominic, grew up with my son. Wonderful, wonderful brother there. And uh, he had actually, he, had, he, had, he has had six, six times this young man has died. Six times. I think he's about 38 years old. And uh, it's because of an allergic reaction, you know, and of course he's doing something he shouldn't be doing, but six times. And the last one, though, what an amazing experience. He went into the presence of Jesus Christ, and when they revived him, he actually died at home. They get him to the hospital and don't revive him until they get him to the hospital. So think about how long he had been dead. But when he revived, he came up praising God oh my gosh he said the love he said steve he said my brother he said you have no idea the love that i experienced when i met christ and he said i was crying weeping he said in fact i was he said that love filled the room where i was at in the emergency room he said the nurses were crying and weeping and praising god he said everybody in the whole wing that i was at he said because that love was that great when i came back he said and for 24 hours at least he said i could feel that presence of jesus christ my, what a testimony that is to hear something like that. And I know what he's talking about. I do know what he's talking about, that kind of love. It's a love that is so great. You don't want to leave it, but yet you don't know how to deal with it in this body, in this flesh, in this realm and everything. Oh, my gosh. I, got, I do have some more testimonies to share with you guys. I actually, I recorded one earlier today while I was driving. I just haven't uploaded it yet. Uh, it's where I first saw the angel of the Lord years ago. Uh, so I'm hoping to be able to share that with you. Anyway, God bless you. We love you. Thank you for for uh, being here with us, standing here with us. And uh, soon, I know also my wife's going to be, uh, her and uh, Sister Elizabeth have been working on the website 
about uh, the, the, her father. Uh, we're going to be sharing that story with you even more. So I certainly hope that uh, you'll get a chance to see that. Uh, thank you, and God bless you. And may you have a great weekend, the rest of your weekend, whatever little bit's left. Yes, late. I got to get to bed because I got to get up early as always. So I sleep very little as it is. Only about five hours a night is all I sleep. And uh, But uh, do pray for me and pray for our family here. We certainly need your, your prayers, and we thank you, and God bless you for being a part of our lives.